Hello, hello, welcome to A Thirsty for Art. This is Yu Zhang, and today we're going to talk about how I made money as an art therapist outside of a license and outside of one to one clinical work. So, I'm going to share a bit about how I did this and the things that I did exactly so that you can, you know, be inspired to think outside of the box and you know, offer something creative, offer something different, use your art therapy knowledge and background in a creative way. Um, especially if you don't have a license, perhaps, or if you, if you just have your ATRBC, or maybe you just graduated, so you're just working um, and don't have the ATR, or you're just kind of you know, tired of one-to-one -one clinical work. Perhaps it's not really aligning with your own values or with your way of, with your strengths, honestly. So you want to do something different. So this is going to be really, really helpful in gaining some ideas of what you can do, the possibilities, right? So there are several things that I did. Um, the first thing is really, and this is not in any chronological order, just keep that in mind, but the thing that I did uh, to make money as an art therapist without license and without one-to-one -one clinical work was actually writing an ebook. So I came up with an idea for an ebook and sold it on my website. So I put the ebook on my website and sold it there. And so I, for a long time, I had like these ideas of art activities um, that people could do at home that were relaxing, that were um, therapeutic and help them express themselves. So I had these ideas and activities. Um, and so I was like, why not just compile them, add some more and then create an ebook. <laughs> and, and so for me, it was really easy because I had already these ideas. I just needed to combine them and add a little bit more. Um, so that's what I exactly did. And I put it on my website. The other thing that I did uh, was also I offered non-clinical services, meaning I offered uh, workshops. So I offered paid workshops before um, through my business, but also by contracting and delivering the workshop to teams and companies online. Um, so I did this through my business, but also I went to other teams and companies to do the workshop. So that has been really fun. Um, and this is definitely something people can offer uh, as an art therapist, no matter where you are at in your career, um, because it's non-clinical service, right? So you don't need per se a license you don't need to do clinical work, right? Um, and so the other thing that I did was I also offered consultations and mentoring services. So since I knew a thing or two about art therapy career and what that's like, because I've experienced it myself, I went through it, I offered online career consulting or consultations um, through my business Thirsty for Art. And these were just really zoom calls where I sat with people to help them kind of figure out how to pursue the art therapy career path and and whatnot because you know it's really hard to find comprehensive easy to understand information online around how one can pursue this career path like it's surprisingly very difficult <laughs> uh, so i make it easy for people by just you know bringing my own experience to the table and saying, okay, this is some possibilities. This is how you can go about it, right? Sharing my knowledge. So that has been really awesome. And yeah, I, I found out that I was really passionate about it after I started offering it. So it was really something nice. Um, so definitely if you have a background in art therapy, you know this knowledge already, you already have that. So you could definitely offer this uh, through your own business as well. All right, so the other thing I did was also create YouTube videos. So I started my own channel. I started YouTube in 2019 and I monetized my channel early on. Monetized meaning I turned on ads or, you know, you know, it's a whole thing on YouTube. Like you have to do certain things to get to be eligible to monetize your channel. So 
I was able to quickly accomplish the things that I needed to do in early on. So my monetization started quite big in the early stages of my YouTube, which was awesome. Um, so I've earned ad revenue from that. Basically, you know, monetization just means that YouTube turns on ads, right? Uh, before, during, and after, or after your video and you're earning revenue from having those ads on there. Um, the sponsors of those ads really basically uh, give you a percentage. And also uh, I've included Amazon links within my YouTube you know, video descriptions and that has helped me earn affiliate commission, Amazon affiliate commission. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about affiliate commission in the next point. So the other thing I did was vlogging and this has helped me earn affiliate commission. Um, I created my blog on my website, thirsty4art.com and have consistently uploaded blog posts there. Uh, very in-depth, very um, easy to understand, right? Around art therapy as well as around art therapy career. And so in my blog post, I've included Google ads plus Amazon affiliate links inside the posts, which both have earned me revenue month to month to month. So recurring, pretty much passive, right? Cause I'm not doing anything really. I'm just, you know, writing more blog posts as I go. So this has been really great. I think that if you have knowledge, if you have ideas to share, blogging is wonderful. You can definitely include ads in your blogs. Google ads and Amazon affiliate links. So if you don't know what Amazon affiliate links are or any affiliate links are or affiliate co commission, what that basically is, is you just share the links to products of brands or, or companies and websites such as Amazon, but there are many more out there. Um, and you just get a commission, a little small percentage of the earnings that the company will earn when someone clicks on the link and makes a purchase. So you're just getting a little commission. It's very small. However, it's a kind of nice added income to what you earn already because it's passive. Um, I mean, you just create your blog post once and you're keeping, you keep on earning revenue um, or this passive income without doing anything more perhaps per se. Um, and the more views that you get, of course, the more the revenue, right? The more the commission. All right. So that's one thing I did. Um, another thing that I did was actually offer group programs and memberships. So I've done non-clinical group sessions slash programs online. They were not clinical art therapy, so it's not mental health treatment, it's not mental health service, it's not psychotherapy. So it didn't really require me to have a license or certification per se. It was really just focused on therapeutic art making or art making to just explore emotions, things like that. And so I've just launched them and was really successful is also very fun and very profitable as well also started a membership where people could gather online weekly to bake art. And this is a little different from the group program because group programs I've had in the past were more like that there was a definite beginning and an end. It was a program, so everybody enrolled at, at the same time, right? Ended at the same time. Uh, but however, memberships are different in that they're just rolling. You're not ongoing month to month to month. Um, people can join anytime. It's automatically recurring. So it's a subscription basically. So it's, that's how it's different. Um, so that has been wonderful to also have. It's great to provide the space for people, right? Um, so group programs and memberships was another thing. Definitely don't need license or certifications for the memberships. Um, you can create something based on your expertise, based on certain types of mediums, perhaps. I mean, it's up to you uh, as long as it's non-clinical. So the other thing that I did to make money um, outside of one-on-one -on -one and uh, clinical work was really speaking and presenting online. So I spoke for different occasions 
um, with different brands and maybe people. Uh, for example, I did like Instagram lives with people before um, and they were paid, right? Collaboration lives. Basically, it was like a, a interview, right? Um, also, I was paid to contribute to an online course before and really the contribution was really based on my expertise and knowledge about art therapy. So that was wonderful. Um, so, you know, when you have your own online presence and business and you're creating content, then it's really not that uncommon to be reached out to and to be asked, hey, can you speak and present? Hey, can you do this, right? And there are paid opportunities for that. So uh, this is something that we don't think about, but definitely something that can likely happen when you have an online business. So something cool, right? Um, so the other thing, the last thing that I want to share here today uh, in terms of what I did to make money as an art therapist outside of one-on-one -on -one clinical is really having Patreon and a buy me a coffee page. Um, but basically, they're both like this donation giving websites, right? Donation receiving websites, especially for content creators and and different brands. Um, so I created a Patreon page early on as I did YouTube videos, right? As I created my videos and my followers and my viewers have, you know, made recurring contributions to my Patreon for little perks, right? And so those have been kind of this recurring passive income. Also recently created a buy me a coffee page, which is just this like website slash platform where you can uh, support creators, content creators, uh, through small domain donations. And so I created my page there. Anybody pretty much can create a page there if you're a content creator, if you have a social media account basically, and um, people can donate you monetarily, right? Uh, to support your content creation. Um, so that also has been a way that I made money outside of the one-to-one -one in clinical work. Um, so now I want to, you know, just go over the list of things that I did um, to earn money, but also I want to add some additional things that you can do or additional ways that you can make money without the license and one-to-one -one clinical work. Uh, I just have a few that I want to share here. So again, summary, how I made money as an art therapist without a license and outside of the one-to-one -one clinical work is writing an ebook, offering non-clinical services and workshops, offering consulta consultations and mentoring sessions, um, offer doing YouTube, creating YouTube videos, blogging, and having affiliate commission through that, doing group programs and memberships, and speaking and presenting, as well as having Patreon or buy me a coffee type of donation-based platform, right? Where people can contribute and donate to support you. So those are the ways I'm probably leaving some out. So that's why I'm going to give you some more ideas on how you can make money outside of license and one-to-one -one work right now. So some of the other ideas are sponsorships. And so what this means is like you're sp being sponsored by companies or brands um, that you feel aligned with, right? For your YouTube, Instagram, or any other social media channels where you're active. Um, so of course, these days on any platform out there, you have to disclose um, you are sponsored if you're doing a sponsored content. So um, you're you know transparent about that. But I think that sponsorships can be a really lucrative uh, thing that you can pursue as you uh, create useful, valuable content for people. So the other thing that you can do is also teaching and educating. What I mean by this is you can, you know, offer strictly quote unquote classes, online classes, whatever, um, that teach about a certain subject matter that you're passionate about, perhaps, um, especially if related to art therapy, right? Maybe it's like creating art or painting or drawing in a more expressive way, in a more maybe therapeutic 
way uh, or maybe it has to do with incorporating a really interesting medium um, in, into artwork, right? That could be like maybe tarot cards, creating tarot cards perhaps, I don't know. Uh, maybe you combine some mediums together, therapeutic mediums together like yoga and art. I don't know, I'm just throwing <laughs> ideas out here, but uh, you get it, right? S- classes around your knowledge and what you're passionate about, things, something that you have delved deep into personally and also perhaps professionally as well. Um, so when you are offering classes, you're bas- you could target either one, people who want to experience the therapeutic experience uh, themselves or two professionals who want to gain this knowledge and experience so that they can help other people right so either one you you might have to target and um offer classes for right so the other thing the other idea is actually creating a course right an online course So this is like the same thing as the previous point, but you can really put your knowledge into an online course to create profit. Um, And I think that a course is a little bit more than just a class because course is like a series of classes and it's a whole experience of going through the classes and lessons and modules. And it can also include different things like actually having like communities, around this course or workbooks or digital resources included in the course so i mean it's however you want to create it however um, once you create a course an online course you can sell it to however many people there's no limit to how many you can sell right because you know there's a limit to how many you can see when you do one-to-one work right you can only see maximum probably eight people per day for one-to-one work, right? But most likely it's not eight because if you do eight, you're gonna be like, unless you're superhuman, probably very tired. Uh, I burnt out. So yeah, so that it's a great way to scale. If you offer online courses, it's a great way to scale. It's a great way to kind of upgrade your business when you have really been through the one-to-one and you've, you've felt and experienced the limit of it and you don't feel aligned with it. So you want to do something different and, and be able to scale. So online course, great idea. Uh, last thing I want to share is actually hosting events and retreats. So I think that events and retreats are great opportunities if you want to really create this kind of like immersive experience for people, right? That you want to really create the whole space, the whole experience, the day to day, morning to night, like, right? Like it's, you know, it's really great. Um, And it's it's a different experience from just a one-to-one, right? And also because it's a group as well, right? But you just need to plan ahead of these things and invest in setting up the event slash retreat first. So that's just something to keep in mind. But such a great idea, right? Especially if you love having group experiences, right? So those are the other ways that you can make money outside of license and one-to-one clinical work. Sponsorships, teaching and educating through classes, creating online courses, and hosting events and retreats. So that's all and i just want to you know remind you um, and just want to tell you that it's you know 21st century and we can really think big as art therapists we can really think creatively we can think outside of the box you know you know um i mean it's 2022 it's so many things have happened since the start of art therapy and um, we can really get creative so yeah, just know that you can do so much more than the typical one-to-one clinical work. Of course, one-to-one clinical work is amazing and it's needed and there are people who love doing that, which is uh, great, right? However, there are also people who want to expand outside of that or try something different, try something unique perhaps um, that have never been tried before or uncommon. That's the beautiful thing. Everybody has different strengths and weaknesses and we have preferences and we were meant to do unique things, each one of us, I think. So hopefully this was helpful in sparking that inspiration as to what you can really possibly do 
to make money as an art therapist outside of the clinical stuff, right? Outside of the one-to-one and really use your knowledge as an art therapist or your background uh, in art therapy. So hopefully this was helpful. Thank you so much for listening. I will catch you in the next one. (laughs) Bye.